be righteous. Your team has recently worked with like brands like NFL, Amazon, and, and mm-hmm. Microsoft. And I know that that can be kind of a, a, a tricky thing to navigate, especially within our culture. How are you educating them on, on like, you know, basically the culture and, and how we work and, and what's cool or not? So we're blessed to have clients that, not all, but I would say most of our clients mm-hmm. um, kind of come to us because they understand that we're specialists in, this, in the um, field. So they don't pretty much question us too much and let us do it. Like Josh lets us do, he already know. Like for <laughs> Amazon, he's like, all right, yeah, I got it. Um, yeah, NFL is the same way. Like a lot of the the super corporate brands that you may think that like, oh, they they pretty much whatever department that that the people who, that we work with are in, they pretty much let us, they're like, oh, no, six degrees know what to do pretty much. So Man. it's not that much education. I think the fact of how we show what we, what we do so well they probably take it back to the team and just saying, Hey, but this is exactly what we want, or this is the moment that we would like. Yeah. No, nah, I'll I absolutely say you guys are the cultural agency at the moment. Like, you know, that title gets thrown along or thrown around a lot. And I think that word culture and advertising gets, gets thrown around, around a lot, but what you guys do is just so impactful. And it's really like within the culture, like it's things that people talk about. Like, I think one of my favorite projects with you guys was, um, the Doja Cat drone light show. Oh yeah, and that was yep. one of our earlier ones. That might have been like our first or second project together. And, so, yeah, um, it was the second project. Second yep. project, and that's one that people still reference this day. I had a call earlier today, and someone was like, "Yo, like I love when you guys did that. Like, can we do something like that?" So yeah, man, you guys really got a. Uh, uh, you guys are tapped in and have the coach's ear, and I think you know when you guys activate in, in ways like that, people really pay attention. Mm hmm. Yeah. No. And then, you know, people it's it's much more than just having like a cool activation or a cool campaign. Right. You want people to kind of receive it. So I think that's how we built six degrees where I was just like, I want people to be a fan of of our agency just as much as you a fan of Nike or Amazon. Mm-hmm. Man, I love that you talked about like how people receive it, too, because one thing that I've noticed about you guys is that like you guys are always in ad week. <laughs> like I always see a, just a great article or they might do an article about black businesses and you guys are interviewed. Like, I think that's some of my favorite shit. Cause it's just like, yo, like, look, these guys are the real deal. They're not just out here activating. They're actually, you know, getting press and, and getting looked at as thought leaders in this space. Yeah, no, that I, I, it's funny that you said that, like I was shout out to our publicist, Christina, but um, it's it, like, when we got into the space, I already knew it was just like different from us to kind of be, and I've never been to advertising school. There's have never been to advertising school, but I was just like, well, how can we kind of bring that to the ad weeks and the inks and the ad ages, like just to bring that different type of point of view? That's what I think. So. Man, I love that you said that too, like not going to advertising school. I feel like too often people who are coming up are like, oh, I got to go graduate from this prestigious business and advertising school. And then I'll work my way up Get at Wyden and Kennedy and yeah. then from Wyden, I'll go to translation. And then now I'm in the door and it's like, nah, like you just got to hit the ground running and figure it out. A hundred percent. I think um I think the best people to 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 fit in a, a industry is the people that don't really know. Like I'm I'm ignorant to certain things. So mm. I work different. Like we work different. Mm-hmm. So it's not like that's why a lot of companies come to us because we're not working like a traditional agency. It's like we're working different, we're flexible, we're doing this, that, you know what I'm saying? Just stuff like that. Because I wasn't taught to do it any other way. We just yeah. had to find out. Yeah, and I, I love that is because it seems like you guys like kind of make up your own rules. And, and yeah. I think that that's important to, especially if you're, if you're trailblazing the way that you guys are, is that you're, you're making up kind of your own rules. Like what would you, what could you say is like your playbook when you're meeting with a brand? Like, you know, what do we need to, what, do, what points do we need to hit on and what do we need to let them know about us when, when you first meet, you know, a new brand or a new client? Um, I think that's hard because we, I don't, we don't traditionally go out and pitch. Mm. So that's kind of, so it's like anybody that comes to us already knows about us. But it's like what I would pretty much tell them is that we're depending on the project, like we're really passionate about it. Mm. Like we're really passionate about anything that we do. We feel like it's a part of our resume. Like I'm not going to do something shitty just for the money. This is like it has to make sense just so I could put in to our cape deck, like stuff like that. Like I, I like case studies so we could get better. So we could kind of have proof of work mm. to do other bigger jobs. So I think that's important to us to do a, a great job. Right. And, and what are some of your favorite projects that you've done in like the last year? If you, can, I mean, if you remember all of them, you guys do a lot of shit <laughs> year to year. It's like, yeah, that, what have been some of your favorites? Um, The last year? I'm sorry. Let me go to Instagram. <laughs> I'm trying to see what <laughs> um, 
I, you know what I would say? I would say, yeah, I would say he on the site right my now. favorite, my favorite, <laughs> my favorite is definitely 404 day with Nike. Okay. Like, um, I really wanted to work with Nike before. I mean, we worked with all of the other sneaker brands, but I specifically wanted to work with Nike and it was cool because, um, because of the event that we did 404 day is now marked on, um, on Nike's calendar as a cultural day to pay attention to. Wow. So like, I think that was cool. And and I feel like that level of like Nike doesn't really activate in the city. So when they do, it was pretty much cool just to have everybody there. So I would say that I always like doing community, like our community stuff that we do for the community. Like we did little baby uh, refurbished court in his neighborhood. Like that was one of my favorite from a couple of years ago. But yeah, just anything that's community driven. Yeah, that, it's funny that you mentioned the little baby project because I think that's one of my favorites from you guys. Is just that like, you know, like you said, anything that's for the community is always kind of top of my list. And I just like the fact that that lives on beyond that activation. Like I've actually yes. seen artists shoot videos at the court and like, you know, I've seen that 4PF <laughs> logo and a bunch of other photos and things like that. I'm like, yo, that's dope that that's still there. And that's something that you guys can kind of look back to. Yeah. And I think like we we uh, the, specifically while we stayed in Atlanta so we could give black people this type of experience mm -hmm. on advertising. I think that New York and L.A. gets it right. But Atlanta's not really getting it. So specifically, um, we wanted to make sure that we're staying here. So anytime brands do stuff here, we could probably just have it shown in the community. Like, cause there's a lot they could do like with a little bit. I've, I always tell brands like it's so much we can get done community wise. Like not only are we going to advertise to the people, but we want to kind of figure out what do they need help with pretty much. Man. I, I, again, I love that. Just being that you guys aren't from Atlanta, but you guys have such this hometown pride for Atlanta and, and kind of act as ambassadors for these major companies there. Um, earlier on, you mentioned like Nike being a dream client. Um, who are your other dream clients that you haven't worked with yet? Like, who uh, PlayStation, list? PlayStation oh. for sure. Ah. <laughs> like yeah. we worked with, <laughs> we worked with Xbox, which was lit. We did, we actually did a drone. I don't know if you know, Josh, we did a drone light show for I them. Did see and, that. I did see that. I and, like, oh, um, the hall. Idea. <laughs> <laughs> but it was lit. Like we did it over the, um, stadium. It was popping like, and it was Xbox, but I'm like, ah, I'm not, I don't really play Xbox. What's up with PS2? I mean, PS, PlayStation. Yeah, no, nah, that's, that would, and, and the thing is, is that, like, PlayStation slowly been kind of creeping into, like, the culture. Yep. Like, they did the stuff with Travis mm -hmm. Scott. Mm -hmm. Um, they, they, they tapped Michael B. Jordan for a lot of stuff on the, on the PS5 launch. And I think, I mean, I think it's definitely possible just with, with how, and I've met a couple people from PlayStation working within the games industry myself. They're very <laughs> nimble and very young and black, uh, group over yeah. in the marketing department as well. PlayStation and Nintendo, my fault. I mm. feel like I ain't never heard nobody work with Nintendo for real, for real. Like Man, agency, they're kind of like, locked down. They're kind of locked down. Yeah, super locked down. Yeah, super. Like, but imagine if we were to do something with Nintendo. Like, oh yeah, what? They're, but I think with them, like they hold their IP like so tight, like Disney does. Yep. Yeah. And especially with mm -hmm. like how Mario is right now. Like with the movie coming out and it's blowing up, I feel like they're going to be even tighter with that with that IP. Where it's like they they want to allow you to kind of change it up the way that like Sony probably would or yeah. Xbox yep. probably would because like. When when Travis Scott got with Sony, I mean they, they had shoes for him. They, he was yep. giving away PS fives to fans, and like I just don't see Nintendo doing that type of stuff. And it's, it's like 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 working within the games industry. Like I'm trying to like push it to be a lot more like black and a lot in and, and a lot more yes. within the culture because there there's a lot of people like from developers to artists that work within you know the industry, and they want to get their voices out too. So like I'm I'm really glad that you said that because I'm like there's a lot of people that are within the industry right now. I don't know if you know this or not that are trying to do that type of stuff. Oh, for real, Dak. Like I, that's the I think that's the next level for us. Like, oh, Pixar is another one. Like, I want to start mm -hmm. doing shit where it's just regular marketing. Mm -hmm. Like, cool, we we understand cultural marketing, but if y'all really test us, I understand general marketing for real, for real. Like, right. so general consumers. So I want to start doing that. Yes, we're a black agency. Yes, keep on throwing us the black shit, but let's go ahead and let's start doing things that's global, pretty much.